Start, bow our heads, and, and let's open with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank You for this day and for being in a country where we can still worship You. And we can celebrate tomorrow as we should, thanking You for this country. Let us not take this, this freedom for granted. Hear our prayers for those who live in countries and in lands where prayer is not even allowed. Gathering together is forbidden, and speaking of God is a sentence of death. Help those who cannot help themselves in these situations. Help us take a stand for our freedoms before we realize our freedoms are gone. And we're in a country where the freedom to worship is taken away from us. At one time, we were the silent majority, but now we're surely the silent minority. Give us your strength to support ourselves and to support those with the common cause. Christ is Lord. Let us remain vigilant in our love for you. Amen. So the first thing you're going to write is our Bible verse. Exodus 23, 8. Exodus 23, 8. Take no bribe. Take no bribe. B-R-I-B-E, bribe. For a bribe blinds the discerning. Again, I'll read it all. Take no bribe, for a bribe blinds the discerning. Everybody got it? Take no bribe, for a bribe blinds the discerning. That's Exodus 23, 8. Bribery. Bribery is all over the world for one reason. Satan is all over the world. Bribery is a tool of Satan. That's our first note. Write that down. Bribery is a tool of Satan. If you had the note sheet, it would say bribery is a tool of blank. Satan was the missing word. You will find bribery... Evil bribery is taught both in the Old and the New Testament. The warnings of bribery. God's laws of bribery. Exodus 23.8 is one of the laws of Moses. Take no bribe for a bribe blinds the discerning. They say that prostitution is the oldest profession if that is true in any sense, bribery must be the second oldest profession. Bribery is dishonest. Whether you're paying a bribe or you're accepting a bribe, it's dishonest. Don't raise your hands, but think for a minute. Have you ever accepted a bribe and then ask yourself, have you ever offered a bribe. You probably have. Everyone here probably has without even thinking about it. Sometimes. Imagine maybe with your kids when they were little and you bribed them. If you'll eat all that broccoli, I'll let you have some ice cream. Is that a bribe? Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe with your spouse. If you'll go to a such and such place with me, 
I'll go over there with you. You know? If you'll go to the stock car races with me, I'll go down and I'll go to the opera with you. Whatever it might be. Any time that you offer something with something in return coming back to you, it's a bribe. So why not go to the races or go to the opera or wherever because you love that other person without expecting them to do something for you in return. Do it for the right reason. Do it without expectation. Do it without bribery. Don't expect to be repaid for doing something that you should do in the first place. You don't need to bribe that person. You need to be nice. Anytime you offer something and you expect something in return, anything in return, you're attempting to bribe someone. Or your note sheets. A bribe does not have to be money. Right? Write this one down. A bribe does not have to be money. Money would be the missing word here. That's where the blank would be on your note sheets normally. A bribe does not have to be money. As we just talked about, it could be a favor traded for another favor. If you'll do this, I'll do this. It's something that gives you an upper hand or it gives the person that you're bargaining with, that you're bribing with, an advantage in a situation. But it's an unfair situation. You know, we have a, a custom here where you go into a restaurant, you have a good meal, and you leave a tip. In fact, on a, a lot of, of it, if you're using a credit card, it calculates the tip for you, the suggested tip. But you know, in some countries, it's frowned upon to leave a tip. It's considered rude. The idea is you're trying to bribe that person. You're trying to get them to give you something better than the people at the next table. Shouldn't that person simply do their job because that's their job? That's the way it's looked at. So tipping is something you just don't do in certain countries. Bribery is wrong because God told us it's wrong, but it's also wrong here because the government has made rules that say bribery is a crime. There are people in this country every day of the week in some court that are being convicted for bribery. Sometimes it's a small thing and sometimes it's really major. Anybody ever hear of a company called Walmart? Last month, the Securities and Exchange Commission fined Walmart $233 billion dollars that's over a quarter of a billion dollars because they were involved in a bribery. Never even read about it in the papers. There is what, they did not actually go out and pay someone, but the, comp, the companies and the people they worked with, primarily in South America, and the, those people, in order to get things done, kind of customary in those countries. They paid off government officials in order to get this or to get that. Walmart was aware of it and went along with it. Well, because they're a U.S. company, bribery is against the law. The Securities and Exchange Commission, when they learned of this, they went to Walmart. Walmart finally confessed 
that they knew anything about it, but they weren't involved in it. Well, they were, because they could have stopped doing business with that person or, or, or that company that was bribing someone else. Family. Yeah, that's true. They were aware that people were involved in an illegal act, and yet they continued to allow it. And that's where it came from. Over a quarter of a billion dollars. And what? From what I understand, Walmart didn't appeal. They simply paid $233 million. Locally, we have seen officials of school districts taking bribes in order for a company to do business with the district, whether it might be food products coming in, supplies, roofing materials. These have all been in the news in the last year. In one city, the building inspectors were bribed to look the other way in situations, to sign off on work, that either was never done or work that was not up to the building codes. Of the nine people in the building department in this little city, seven of them were fired when it was found out. From my understanding, there was no restitution paid at all. Doing someone a favor out of goodness of your heart is not a bribe. A bribe is not goodness of your heart. And that's for your note sheet. A bribe is not the goodness of your heart. A bribe is not the goodness of your heart. A bribe is not the goodness of your heart. A bribe comes from the sin which we all carry. The sin nature. And we want to bribe or to receive a bribe as an upper hand, an edge. We want to help ourselves or we want to favor someone else to an unfair advantage. We want something that the next guy can't get. Well, what are bribes that aren't money? We talked about favors. We talked about eat the broccoli and I'll give you some ice cream. No money involved there. How about flattery? Did you ever say something nice to someone with the expectation of getting something back that they would feel good about you then you would be in their favor things might work out better for you statements made by you to gain something is a bribe they're not said as sincere compliments but with the hopes of getting what you don't deserve in the first place. Flattery for undeserved gain is sin. That's for your note sheet too. Flattery for undeserved gain is sin. Flattery or undeserved gain is sin. And then another one right back to back here. Flattery as a sincere compliment is not a bribe. Flattery as a sincere compliment is not a bribe. The missing word here, 
would be compliment, note she. Flattery is a sincere compliment. As a sincere compliment is not a bribe. A compliment is given without any expectation of a reward coming back to you. No expectation. It's just real. Complimenting someone and expecting even a thank you could be considered a bribe because you're expecting them to do something, say something, or to act. Showing partiality where one person has an unfair advantage over another is a form of bribery. Unfair partiality is sin. Go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 16. Everybody have a Bible? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 16. We're going to read verses 19 and 20. You know when you're there with an amen? Amen. Do not pervert justice or show partiality. Do not accept a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eye of the wise and twist the words of the innocent. Follow justice, and justice alone, so that you may live and possess the land the Lord your God is given. Partiality was bribery then, as God taught the Israelites to do the right thing and to turn from evil. Will you turn from evil? The evil that's in this world? Will you treat everyone fairly without giving someone an advantage unfairly over someone else? We see bribery and we see partiality in our justice. Deals are made. Give some dirt on someone and the court will lessen your sentence. Plead guilty to one offense, and they'll drop the charges for another offense. If you're rich enough to pay a fine, you can go home. If you don't have the money, you go to jail. Power tends to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And that's our next note. Power tends to corrupt. Power tends to corrupt, comma, absolute power corrupts absolutely. You've heard that said sometime in your life. Power tends to corrupt, absolute power corrupts absolutely. When power is used to influence, fairness goes right out the window. Money can change hands, or it may be favors. Unfair influence is partiality that benefits one person over another. In um, Acts, there is a story about Paul Felix was a powerful judge, and Ananias, he brought charges against Paul. In fact, brought a whole group of people to Felix and said, Oh, you've been a wonderful judge, and we've done so well under you. You've got a guy here that's really making a lot of trouble, a lot of problems. What did Paul do? He was preaching the gospel. Let's pick up. You'll look up Acts chapter 24. Acts chapter 24. We're going to read verses 22 through 27. Make a note. Acts 24. Verses 23 through 27. We're not going to read the whole chapter. 
kind of set it up for you. Then Felix, who was well acquainted with the way, adjourned the proceedings. When Lysias, the commander, comes, he said, I will decide your case. He ordered the centurion to keep Paul under guard, but to give him some freedom and to permit his friends to take care of his needs. Several days later, Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who is Jewish. He sent for Paul and listened to him as he spoke about faith in Jesus Christ. As Paul talked about the righteous, the self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and said, That's enough for now. You may leave. When I find it convenient... I will send for you. At the same time, he was hoping that Paul would offer him a bribe. So he sent for him frequently and talked with him. Paul never tried to bribe him. Repeatedly, he sent for him. When two years had passed, Felix was succeeded by Portius Festus because Felix wanted to grant a favor to the Jews, he left Paul in prison. Why? Didn't get the bribe, which was customary in his court. In that day and time, it was wrong, but it was an accepted thing in the society. You, if you had the money, you could pay the judge. It sets you free or would rule in your favor. Power corrupts. Felix was powerful. He was the judge, jury, set the sentence, but also accept bribes. Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. As verse 26 tells us, Felix wanted Paul to bribe him the way it was. And he left Paul in prison for doing nothing. How about you? Have you ever been falsely accused for doing something? Punished for doing something that you didn't do? Falsely charged? Maybe imprisoned, or maybe just shunned by other people. Because the rumor had it that you did this or you did that. People didn't want to associate with you and you suffered because of it. Couldn't bribe them. You knew you were right. When Jehoshaphat was king of Judah... He appointed judges, and he gave them strict warnings. This verse is Second Chronicles. Put that on your note sheet. Second Chronicles, nineteen seven. Second Chronicles, nineteen seven. Now let the fear of the Lord be with you. Judge carefully, for with the Lord our God there is no injustice or partiality, or bribery. That's what we need to remember. And this is our last note. With the Lord God, this on your note sheet, with the Lord God, there is no injustice. With the Lord God, there is no injustice, or partiality, or bribery. With the Lord God, there is no injustice, or partiality, or bribery. And there shouldn't be. There should not be in our lives, we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. 
You know, I can remember back, I started to say a few years ago, it's probably 20 years ago, when the kids wore the little plastic bands that had the lettering uh, WWJD. What would Jesus do? That's what we're supposed to be doing every day. We don't need a bracelet. That's what we're supposed to do. If we're allowing injustice in our lives, we're not doing what Jesus would do. If we're allowing partiality in our lives, we're not doing what Jesus would do. If we're allowing bribery, whether we're giving it or we're taking it, if we allow bribery in any form in our lives, we're not doing as Jesus would do. We're not doing as Jesus would want us to do. What does Jesus want? With heads bowed, I want you to think just a moment about what you've done in your life, what type of bribery you've accepted, what kind of bribery you have offered, what type of injustice, what type of false compliments you have given, all with the expectation of it benefiting you in some way. Think about those things. And then, if you need to pray about them, I'd ask you to come forward. If you need to get right with God, now is your time. Come on down. And let me pray with you. Maybe you have a prayer request that doesn't involve bribery. Maybe you've got a personal situation, a family situation, a financial situation, and you need prayers. Maybe there's a health concern. That's why I'm here tonight. Let me pray with you. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Please come forward and let's talk.